This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning is a lifelong career training partner for audit, cybersecurity, and information technology professionals, transforming how employers train and professionals learn while following global standards for certification and career development training. See why ACI Learning is trusted and loved worldwide. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to learn more. So you've been in, you've been in Paris or France this whole time. I see you've done a whole lot of things in in I Paris. In Paris. I grew up in Paris. Uh, then I lived in London and in New York for a few years, and then came back to Paris uh, just before COVID. Actually, uh, when I sold my previous company. So so so, t so tell us about um, about Zama and what you're what you're doing with that, and and we can branch off in other topics from there. Zama is a company working on a technology called homomorphic encryption. So homomorphic encryption is a type of encryption technique where you can do processing on encrypted data without actually having to decrypt it. So imagine, for example, um, I am a user of uh, ChatGPT, right? Everybody's talking about ChatGPT right now. When I'm sending a query to ChatGPT, all of my data is being processed by OpenAI's servers, right? They're the one running the actual machine learning models. Uh, and then they send me back a response and I can go back and forth. What that means is that the company who's running the service has access to all of the data of the users using that service. With homomorphic encryption, you could do the same thing, but keeping the data encrypted end to end. So I would encrypt my data on my side, on my machine, send it to, you know, uh, the provider of the AI service, they would process it blindly, encrypted, produce a response which itself is encrypted. So ChatGPT gets an encrypted input and produces an encrypted output, and I can decrypt the output. So from my perspective, nothing changes, but now the data is encrypted during transit and during processing. And so why is that important? It's important because when you can do that, it doesn't matter if a government subpoenas the company for data, they don't have the keys to decrypt the user data. It doesn't matter if a hacker uh, breaches the server security because there is nothing for them to steal. There is no data visible. There is, it doesn't matter if an employee goes crazy because they cannot snoop in on any kind of data. Effectively, it removes the need to trust a service provider with the security and the privacy of the data we're sending to use the service. Wow, uh, that, that it's a really interesting uh, concept, Rand. I, I, I like it. Um, it. It goes beyond the. I mean, we've heard a lot about people storing data unencrypted. You know, you see these, you see these stories all the time. Somebody's got into a database and got X amount of credit card numbers, passwords, whatever it might be, because they're not storing the things encrypted. But you're going beyond that. You're saying actually, because even then, people would decrypt the data to process it and then encrypt it again to store it. But you're saying it never gets decrypted. Exactly on the server. Exactly. The way we like to think about it is, you know how on the web we went from, you know, no encryption at all to encrypting transmission of data between client and server. So HTTP to HTTPS. Mm -hmm. Well, imagine if the data stays encrypted even during processing. So imagine if like you could extend, you know, HTTPS to end to end encryption for anything you do online. And this is really what we think about when we think about homomorphic encryption. We see it as end-to-end -end encryption for everything you do online. Hmm. Excellent. How, how does this affect uh, kind of processing speeds and stuff? Because I imagine it puts more load onto your CPU, does it, in some way? That, that's a great question. You know, when, when we talk about a technology that sounds like a magical solution for too many problems, the question is always, why aren't we using it? Uh, and the, in the case of homomorphic encryption, there are three reasons. The first one is that it was way too complicated to use. Unless you had a PhD in cryptography, it was impossible for you to use this technology. The second problem is that you were very limited in terms of the kind of operations you could perform. So you could maybe add numbers, you could multiply numbers, but you couldn't like, you know, run a database on encrypted data or run a machine learning model on encrypted data. And finally, the third problem is performance. Uh, it basically takes about a million times longer to process data encrypted than if it's not encrypted. So, you know, great idea, but if something that used to take a second now takes 11 days, it's not exactly user-friendly and web scale, uh, you know, if you think about it. So these are exactly the things that we had to figure out in our company, uh, effectively by building tools for developers 
that makes it easy to use homomorphic encryption, even if you know nothing about cryptography, while also working on making the technology able to do any kind of computation at any kind, at a much, much, much faster uh, speed.